There is no shortage of power strong enough to keep us down for good. Finally, without any further delay, we welcome you to the Sunshine State of Orlando, Florida, as we approach a sold-out Kia Center for the 2024 Survivor Series War Games. You are looking live at the Kia Center in the Magic City of Orlando as we welcome you to the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic. This is Survivor Series and we are locked, we are loaded, we are ready for war games. And before our arena transforms to the war game set, we look at the participants for this extraordinary bout. Of course, two teams of four set to collide over a personal struggle on Thursday Night SmackDown. One that has developed for months over championship gold, greed, respect, lack there of it, and so much bad blood between these eight women. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, the former women's tag team champions, have been at odds with the Kabuki Warriors for months, and especially Zoe Stark in recent weeks has had her issues with the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez. 
All the more reason they are itching to get their hands on their opposers as they are set to enter war games in a matter of minutes. But of course they are not here to fight this battle alone. The first lady of the LWO, Selena Vega has got her own scores to settle with the women that oppose her. Selena just a few months ago was challenging Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship, a matchup that in the lead up became oh so personal for Vega at their sneak attacks by Perez. Vega at one point in time trying to defend the honor of Raquel Rodriguez after Perez stabbed her in the back all those months ago. Selena, of course, the casualty of Kyrie Sane's return last month at the season premiere of SmackDown. Selena Vega has fallen short time and time again to the women that oppose her tonight. Now standing alongside her friend Raquel Rodriguez and two women who she may not be friends with, but that she respects in Baszler and Stark, they certainly make for a formidable team. But so does the four that stand across the squared circle from them tonight. Marching down the aisle, one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions and the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, and one of her Kabuki Warrior sisters and the Pirate Princess of Kairi Sane. Asuka has always been one to show no remorse, but ever since Kairi's return last month, she has certainly showed a different side. Only putting on a new mask, putting on a new face, underhanded tactics, sneak attacks, whatever it takes, Kyrie Sane has not been afraid to get the blood on her hands. Realigned with her Kabuki Warriors and Asuka and Io Sky. Those three women will stop at nothing to tear apart the SmackDown Women's Division. And if they have their way tonight, along with Roxanne Perez, it could only the beginning of disaster on SmackDown. Of course, Io Sky, the other half of the women's tag team champions, awaits to walk her down the aisle. But Asuka and Kyrie Sane certainly looking like two of a four formidable duo. Kyrie this past Thursday securing the advantage in this matchup for her unit, defeating Shayna Baszler on one-on-one -on -one action. Certainly a role that'll play pivotal in this War Games affair. And here comes the Women's World Champion. Like her, love her, or hate her, you cannot deny the results. You want to talk about underhanded tactics? Look no further. Last month at Bad Blood, an exposed turnbuckle aided Roxanne Perez in the defense of her gold over her rival Raquel Rodriguez. Perez stabbing Raquel in the back all the way back in the month of July, rode that momentum into SummerSlam, took advantage of an emotional Raquel, and won the championship gold that is now around her waist. Defending it successfully ever since against some of her opponents tonight as well. But all roads have led to this outing in the middle of the Magic City in Orlando, Florida. Kicking us off right here in moments. It is the four on four women's war games match. Perez, along with the Kabuki Warriors, takes on Baszler, Stark, Vega, and Raquel. Let the war games commence in the middle of Orlando, Florida. The battlefield of Survivor Series will soon bear witness to the clash of SmackDown's most fierce and determined warriors. A war built on gold, broken friendships, reunited bonds, respect, and the absence of it. For months, Asuka and Io Sky have waged war against Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark in a relentless pursuit to defend their claim as the premier force in the tag team division. The rivalry has pushed both sides to their absolute limits, with no quarter given. Enter Kyrie Sane, the pirate princess, who has returned, not as the bright-eyed warrior of old, but as a more cunning and ruthless version. 
Aligned once more with her Kabuki warrior allies, Kairi Sane has brought a new level of danger, using underhanded tactics and sneak attacks to ensure victory at any and all cost. But not all battles have been waged on the front lines of the tag team division. Back in July, the young prodigy, Roxanne Perez, made a shocking statement by betraying Raquel Rodriguez. The message was clear. Perez wasn't on SmackDown to make friends. She was there to claim her place as women's world champion. Selena Vega, the first lady of the LWO, has faced defeat at the hands of her Survivor Series opponents far too many times. But now, she stands resilient, refusing to be a stepping stone any longer. Vega and Raquel, fierce and imposing, driven by past betrayals and newfound alliances. Respect hard-earned, rivalries inflamed, Shayna Baszler, the Queen of Submission, and Zoe Stark, a breakout superstar of 2024, round out this formidable team. Each woman seeking to reclaim what has been taken and to pay back the heartbreaking kind. On the other side, the team draped in gold and united by ambition. Roxanne Perez, the women's world champion, leads the Kabuki Warriors, Kyrie Sane, Asuka, and Io Sky into the unforgiving structure that is War Games. Eight Warriors, two teams, one arena that will test them all. This is not just a match, it's the ultimate proving ground. When the women of SmackDown step into the match beyond, only the strongest will emerge victorious. The question isn't who will fight, it's who will survive. Who will be the last women standing inside War Games? The following is a women's War Games match. The rules of the match are as follows. Two teams will be contained in separate cages, with one member of each team starting the match. At regular intervals, alternating members from each team will be released to enter the match. The team with the advantage will be the first to have a member released into the match. Once all competitors have entered, War Games officially begins. The match could be won by pinfall or submission. Exiting the cage results in a forfeit. Now, let the war... Mike Rome throwing down the official rules as the two rings in one giant steel cage have welcomed themselves into the Kia Center. The match beyond is upon us. Introducing first from Tokyo, Japan, one half of the women's tag team champions, Io Sky. As we previously mentioned, the advantage in this matchup is along with Io Sky and company. Io will kick things off for her unit. And when the time draws near for a new participant to enter this matchup, it will be either Kyrie, Asuka, or Roxanne, leaving obviously Raquel Rodriguez, who will start this matchup in moments at a disadvantage. That is why the advantage contest this week on Raw and SmackDown were so important for their individual War Games matchup. It can lead to two on ones, three on twos, and four on three advantages throughout the match. The time War Games officially commences and decisions could be made, bodies will already be beaten. EO Sky starts off this matchup, and she is set to oppose a familiar foe as Raquel Rodriguez looks to lead her team in a battle, leave everything on the battlefield, and walk away with her hand held high. And from Rio Grande Valley, Texas, Raquel Rodriguez! What a year this woman has had, winning the Elimination Chamber, walking into WrestleMania as a challenger for championship gold, winning the Women's World Championship in a battle that ultimately led to the respect that Raquel and Shayna Baszler now house for each other. 
Raquel has been a part of so many PLE events this year, retained that championship for several months until those issues with Roxanne Perez arose. But now inside war games, Raquel Rodriguez and company look for the ultimate payback. Raquel and Io Sky, no strangers to each other. They fought at the King of the Ring event earlier this year for the Women's World Championship. Now their paths cross again as they kick off the Women's War Games matchup here at Survivor Series. Certainly a big fight feel in the middle of Orlando, Florida. The bell has sounded. War Games has kicked off. Should be very interesting to see the strategies of these two units throughout the matchup. Raquel Rodriguez, best case scenario here. We're going to try to incapacitate EO Sky as much as possible before a member of EO's team walks down those stairs and enters the ring as that unit does have the advantage heading into this Survivor Series match. Kyrie Sane pinning Shayna Baszler in a contest three nights ago on SmackDown. Now putting Raquel and company at that disadvantage. And Io Sky using her speed and agility to her advantage, just trying to level the former women's world champion in her own right. Io Sky currently one half of the tag team champions. Make no mistake about it, knows her way around a singles affair. Nearly defeating Raquel Rodriguez, as we mentioned, for the women's world title earlier this year. Such an environment that surrounds this matchup. Two rings, one giant steel cage. This is only the first of two War Games battles here tonight in the middle of the Kia Center. Io Sky just looking to beat down Raquel Rodriguez in hopes that when the clock does strike and a member of her team joins this matchup, it'll just be a reason to add salt on the wounds. And speaking of the clock, the count is ticking as Io Sky all over Rodriguez. And it's going to be the Pirate Princess, Kyrie Sane, who is going to make her way down the aisle. Or shall we say down the stairs and into the ring. All the while, Io Sky using the cage as leverage to drop an elbow right on the heart of Rodriguez. And now Kyrie Sane from behind. Before the days of the Kabuki Warriors, these two were the Sky Pirates at NXT. Singles competitors, singles gold was house, tag team championships have been house. Two decorated superstars from across the pond. Raquel Rodriguez finds herself stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Takes down Kyrie Sane that time. No love lost between those two superstars. Remember Raquel defeated Kyrie in the finals of the Women's World Championship Eliminator last month. Just as she was celebrating that victory, Kyrie Sane attacked her from behind, took out her knee, dropped her with an insane elbow from the top. Raquel's been looking for payback ever since. Is Kyrie Sane all over Raquel? At least she was. Now Io Sky from behind, not going to allow Raquel Rodriguez to have any sort of comeback. And yeah, this is the advantage that the Kabuki Warriors and Roxanne Perez were oh so desperate for, and they got it. Luckily for Raquel Rodriguez, time is near, and, and by the sounds of it, it looks like Zelina Vega will be joining her friend Raquel in the middle of this War Games matchup, and God knows Raquel needs it, because the Kabuki Warriors are all over the former champ. The LWO's first lady making a beeline towards the squared circle. She's got a score to settle with the Sky Pirate and Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane exposing that turnbuckle, knocking her out momentarily with a spinning back fist. All the way back in her return at the season premiere of SmackDown. Took Selena Vega out of Women's World Championship contention on that night. And unfortunately for Vega, Kyrie's looking to take her out of contention for the foreseeable future in this matchup. Luckily for Raquel, the numbers are now even. They can split the difference and try to focus on their individual Opposers here, and both Io and Kyrie getting sent for rods. You notice that steel plate that connects the two rings, diamond plated just like the steel steps at ringside. Certainly not a welcomed landing for Io Sky. Kyrie Sane getting a harsh one as well. She went up against the steel cage. Crash landing for Selena. Miscalculated that spring warrior, Neo. Gonna make her pay for it. 
And the number is going to keep on escalating in this matchup as we are moments away from another entry. And Asuka, the other half of the women's tag team champions, marches down the steps and looks to join her fellow Kabuki Warriors in action. And, well, hold on here. Asuka's not in a hurry, it seems, as Io Sky just took out Selena Vega with an over the moon soul. Asuka's at ringside, throwing some plunder inside of the squared circle. That's a steel chair, and now she's got a table. Well, this is War Games. Anything goes. All the while, Raquel Rodriguez on the far right of your screen, sending EO for an amusement park ride off that neck breaker. And of course, no pinfalls or submissions, no decisions to be made until all eight women have entered this contest. The Buki Warriors number numbers in their advantage for Raquel Rodriguez. We're gonna make sure Asuka cannot even link up with her fellow allies. This is gonna continue to be absolute carnage and be more and more action to try to keep up with as the numbers progress. Raquel dropping Asuka with a DDT right on the diamond plated steel. Oh, and there Asuka trying to shake off the cobwebs. And trying to use this numbers advantage while they have it, at least for the next couple of seconds. Now there's Shayna Baszler or Zoe Starks at the join the fray. And it's gonna be the gritty in your face, Zoe Stark, who has had a hell of a breakout year in 2024. Zoe's been in the ring with everybody that she opposes tonight at some point in time in one-on-one -on -one action. Just a matter of a few weeks ago, Zoe Stark picked up a singles victory over Kyrie Sane. Only to propel her into more issues with the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez. Meanwhile, Zoe's looking to throw some more plunder inside of the ring. All the while, Io Sky just dropped an elbow to the heart of Ega. And a wild coyote cam going on, trying to do our best to keep up with all this action and call it as we see it. Zoe Stark joining the fray, joining the right ring. God knows Zelina Vega needs the assistance right now as she drops Kyrie Sane on the back of her neck. Io drops Vega and Asuka just dropped Raquel. And it's such a chaotic matchup just as SmackDown has been. You look at just three nights ago, it was absolute bedlam surrounding these eight women. Attacks, brawls, all bleeding out of that advantage matchup. Oh, Raquel Rodriguez revving up the engines, little snake guys, and a big boot to Asuka. And when the clock strikes zero, the women's world champion Roxanne Perez will look to get the numbers one last time. Raquel Rodriguez single handedly taking out some Kabuki Warriors as the women's world champion Roxanne Perez enters the fray. And God knows Raquel is looking to take her head off. Just went swinging with that kendo stick, but that is something Raquel cannot allow. Oh man, it is a triple team city as Raquel Rodriguez is trying to fight her way out between a rock and a hard place. Everybody's got weapons. Selena Vega and Zoe Stark realizing what's going on, trying to enter the other ring. But the Kabuki Warriors playing a hell of a defense at the moment. This is what War Games is all about. If you came here for a wrestling matchup, a strategic battle, clearly not the matchup for you. This is gonna be an absolute war, and it already has been. Kabuki Warriors and Roxanne Perez with the numbers at the current moment, and clearly it's showing. Every single one of their opponents is looking up at the lights right now. Raquel trying to come alive. Easier said than done. Little miscommunication there by the Kabuki Warriors. All the while, Io Sky, I believe, is working on Raquel Rodriguez. And this is absolute bedlam here in Orlando, Florida. Shayna Baszler, much needed. The numbers counting down. And the Queen of Spades gonna be the last to join the fray. Former women's world champion who kicked off a reign with that gold right here last year at Survivor Series. Oh! Roxanne Perez taking out Zoe Stark. Asuka sending Vega to the opposite ring. 
Shayna Baszler going to look to add some more tools to the shed. We're going to stop sign in here. And although I commend the effort, and I don't know what Baszler's got in mind, maybe getting in that ring and start throwing some fists is all she would need at the current moment. Hold on, take a look at the right side. Raquel going for a power bomb. And a kick out by Asuka, you briefly heard the announcement by Mike Rome. War Games officially has begun, ladies and gentlemen. Pinfall and submission can take place. We will do our best to continue to keep up with this ever looming action. Four on four, Baszler, Stark, Vega and Raquel versus Asuka, Kyrie, Io and Roxanne. Tables have been broken. Bodies may be broken by the end of this matchup. Bodies are swinging and so are the weapons. I don't think there is words to sum up what we are seeing here. C360 from Zoe to I believe that's Kyrie. Io Sky's got Shayna Baszler. The queen of submission locked in a hold on the opposite side of the ring. Baszler obviously the freshest at the current moment. Raquel. Take it out, Asuka, with a Tahana bomb, but the Empress survives. Baszler and Stark double team offense on Io. Perez using that trash can to her advantage. Io Sky gets dropped on her dome. This is crazy. I don't even know what to say, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the issues, the greed, the guilt, the lack of respect on SmackDown has led to. Meanwhile, Selena Vega is scaling the cage. Get down from there. Not that way, splash on Asuka. Holy hell. Selena Vega throwing caution in the wind. All the while, Raquel focusing on Kyrie, Baszler and Stork focusing on Perez. Raquel Rodriguez. Tahana bomb on Kyrie Sane. Baszler playing defense. She got her. My God. This was absolutely sick. The second the matchup quote unquote officially began. It was a race to the finish line and Raquel just so happens to be the first to cross the ribbon. My goodness. Here are your winners. The team of Raquel Rodriguez, Selena Vega, Zoe Stark, and Shayna Baszler. I got no words, ladies and gentlemen. We knew it was gonna be a fight. The name War Game speaks for itself, but that was just brutal. Weapons galore, bodies flying. Vega jumped off the damn top of the cage. But at the end of it all, Raquel secures victory and stands alongside Vega, Baszler, and Stark as victorious in War Games. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. We want to take you back to SmackDown this past Thursday night. An epic Champions versus Challengers tag team main event. As United States Champion Jey Uso stood alongside World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes to take on their Survivor Series opponents in Carmelo Hayes and John Cena. Melo surviving one of Jey's best shots and at the end of the bell was victorious. Pitting main event Jey Uso, certainly gaining some momentum ahead of their United States title rematch right now.
It was on Halloween night on Thursday Night SmackDown that the United States Championship reign of the man they call him, the one of one, Carmelo Hayes, went up in smoke after Jey Uso answered an open challenge. But now Carmelo Hayes looks to right the wrong of just a few weeks ago. Looks to get this train back on track. The rematch is on. And Carmelo Hayes is looking to regain the red, white, blue, and gold. Melo winning that championship. Back at the Great American Bash edition of SmackDown on July the 5th in Philadelphia. Defeating Ricochet, Chad Gable, Ludwig Kaiser. Just some of the names that Melo turned away throughout his United States Championship reign. But the surprise of Jey Uso, who was banished from Monday Night Raw in the month of September, re-emerges on SmackDown as a solo act and took out Melo, taking away the United States Championship. That is the wrong that Melo looks to right here at Survivor Series. Well, it has already been one exciting night. I am still in disbelief at the pure chaos we just witnessed moments ago in the women's war games matchup. But we still got another one of those to come from Monday Night Raw. But right now, the lights are on bright and the spotlight is on SmackDown talents as Carmelo Hayes hopes and prays he can keep down Jey Uso. Arriving on SmackDown and taking the blue brand by storm. Main event, Jey Uso is back on a premium live event and he's got gold around his waist. It has been a tumultuous year for Jay and Jimmy. Being banished from Monday Night Raw thanks to the Judgment Day. But Jay now finds a solo opportunity. Kicked down the door and took away that championship on Halloween night. We are seeing Jey Uso like we've never seen him before. And just over the last few weeks on SmackDown has solidified himself as one of the faces of Thursday nights. Orlando is on fire for your United States Champion. There is magic in the air as our first championship of the evening is set to be defended. Jey Uso already with a successful defense of that gold under his belt, defeating JD McDonough less than two weeks ago on SmackDown. But after Melo knocked him off in the tag team belt three nights ago, has the confidence of the defending champion been rocked? Well, all remains to be seen. We got questions and we need answers. Let us send things down to Mike Rome for the United States Championship match. Introductions. Introducing the challenger from Boston, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 210 pounds, Carmelo Hayes. And his opponent from San Francisco, California, weighing in at 242 pounds, the WWE United States Champion, Main Event J. On Halloween night, Melo put himself at a disadvantage in that open challenge. Jey Uso had the surprise factor in his corner. Tonight, there is none of that. Melo has had over two weeks to re-scout Jey Uso, put together a new game plan leading up to Survivor Series. Now fully prepared, will Carmelo Hayes be able to take down one of the men who has exploded on the scene on the blue brand? Melo wants that United States Championship just as, month, just as much as he wants breath in his lungs. Will he be able to obtain it? Here we go to find out. It's a rematch from Halloween night on SmackDown where Jey Uso surprised Carmelo Hayes. No surprises to be had here at Survivor Series between these two individuals. You also notice Trick Williams accompanying Carmelo Hayes down the aisle. 
Trick Williams really began to become absent in Melo's corner as Melo's confidence grew throughout his United States Championship reign. Melo defeated Ludwig Kaiser in a two out of three falls match without Trick Williams. He defeated Carlito at Halloween Havoc without Trick Williams. But unfortunately, was not able to defeat Jey Uso when Trick Williams was absent from his corner. Now you see Trick accompanying Melo to the ring tonight. Is that on purpose? Is that by design from Carmelo Hayes? Hopefully we just see an even match throughout this contest and don't see any outside interference. On the other side, you don't want to get too ahead of yourselves. Melo and Trick have shown a lot more respect for their individual opponents over the last few months. Certainly goes to show the success, the confidence growing of both men as Melo looks to regain it tonight. Beautiful drop kick with the ropes as an assist. Or excuse us, a leg drop that time. Melo with so many maneuvers in his arsenal. Jey Uso rolled to the outside, just trying to shake off the cobwebs. Recalculate here. Jey Uso had to expect this, had to expect an early fire from Melo, especially after Halloween night's result. Melo again taken to the outside. Here comes Jay going skyward in the middle of the Magic City. This crowd in Orlando coming unglued as Jay Uso is letting Carmelo have it. Saw Jay go skyward on SmackDown several of times. Unfortunately, the result wasn't there. Melo pinned Jay just a few nights ago. Will the result be the same? Will Carmelo Hayes outlast Jey Uso in this singles bout and regain the United States Championship? Melo cutting off Jey Uso before a true rally could really begin here at Survivor Series. Melo unloading on main event Jay in the corner. Jey Uso all kinds of shaking up as Carmelo Hayes seems to have his target. On the top, Melo feeling good. Frog splash delivers flush. But it's not over yet. Jey Uso still alive. And it was last year at Survivor Series that AJ Styles defeated Cody Rhodes to become the United States Champion. Will Lightning strike twice this year? Will we see another new United States Champion? If this keeps up, Carmelo Hayes may be coasting to victory here in the Kia Center. There's a reversal by Jay, catching Melo when he least expected it. Carmelo Hayes looking up at the lights here at the Kia Center momentarily and is just seeing Jay Uso's shadow unloading with those kicks in the corner. As we mentioned, Jay Uso already with a successful defense of that gold under his belt. JD McDonough tried to target Jay two weeks ago. Jay turned him away in the same night. Now Jay Uso once again in the ring with a Recent foe in Carmelo Hayes. Will Jay find the same luck as just a few weeks ago? Melo trapped into the corner. Jay's feeling it. Back it up just like his daddy. Jay Uso kicking things into a new gear after an early onslaught by the challenger. Goes for the Samoan drop. Melo did his homework. Schoolboy that time, not watching his ring awareness. It's gonna be a rope break, but there's a first 48. Melo might have caught him. Not just yet. Melo went for that schoolboy. He wasn't able to get a pinfall, but what he did do was get Jay in a position for a first 48. Was able to deliver. Unfortunately, Jay still alive here in Orlando. Melo just looking to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Trying to outrun Jey Uso. The youth of Melo, of course, on his side. A little bit more speed, a little bit more agile. Jey Uso looks to be hurt. We said it before, we'll say it again in this contest. If this keeps up, Melo may be on his way to coasting to another United States Championship reign. Crossbody to the outside. Melo has wrestled this matchup predominantly in the driver's seat. We've seen Jey Uso wrestle more a defensive contest thus far. Seemingly finding himself in a spot of a comeback position time and time again. And Melo continues to just take his legs out from under him. 
Jey Uso rolled back inside the ring. Melo could have easily went for a pinfall off that crossbody, but just looking to institute some more pain and punishment. Trying to put the exclamation point on this matchup. See Melo slowing down the pace here. Maybe that's his best idea. We talked about having that speed and agility on his side. Maybe that's what Jay's expecting. Maybe that's why Jay has found holes thus far to try to rally a comeback. Melo's best case scenario may just be slowing down the pace, taking the wind out of Jay's sails, taking the gasp out of the audience here. And just slowly but surely beating down Jay. Melo going for that signature springboard. Nobody home. Jay read his playbook from a mile away. Crash and burn by Melo with a super kick. And now it's Jey Uso, who once again sees a window of opportunity. Can he make the most of it? Carmelo getting turned inside out with a suplex variation. Jay looking good. Jay feeling good. But will the United States champion retain his gold here tonight? Melo yanked out of the corner. Not over yet, Melo's still alive. Jey Uso has got to keep his foot on the gas, has got to continue to wrestle this matchup his way. Oh no, goes for the suplex, another reversal by Melo. Just when you think Jay has turned the tables, Carmelo Hayes finds a way to put Jay on his back, looking up at the lights. Carmelo Hayes may have this matchup won. He may be proving with no questions asked tonight that Jay is only the United States champion based off the surprise factor that was to be had on Halloween night. Carmelo Hayes looking to turn doubters into believers. Cutter takes out Jay. This is how he pinned him on SmackDown. Jay Uso kicks out. Melo thought he had the title one. Super kick. Jay collapses. A second one. Melo is becoming unhinged. He thought he had Jay with that cutter. The same maneuver he used this past Thursday night on SmackDown. Jay Uso looks like a Bro broken, beaten shell of himself at the moment. Mello went to the well with that super kick. Can't continue to go to the same maneuvers as Jey Uso scouts him and cuts him in half with a spear. Mello gets the kick out. Carmelo Hayes might have got a little overzealous, might have got a little overconfident. Jay gonna make him pay. Headbutt from a wild Samoan. Back into the lateral press. But another survival by Carmelo. Man, what a United States Championship matchup we have on hand. There's a reversal and an overhand chop by the challenger. Jey Uso sent to the corner, you see, and read the body language of both of these men. Fatigue is setting in. Jay with a super kick of his own. And just a signature shot out of Jey Uso's arsenal. That'll knock a couple of the screws loose in the mind of tonight's challenger. And the man they call him, Carmelo Hayes, gets dropped off the neck breaker. Jay might have taken some out of himself. But whatever he's got left, he has got to push himself forward. Jay's going up top where he's extremely comfortable. Going for a so splash. Lands on the button. And the veteran instincts dragging Carmelo Hayes away from the ropes, away from survival. And he's got him. Carmelo Hayes, ever aggressive. 
from bell to bell, but Jay Uso proving to be resilient as all hell as his back was against the wall and the gold was on the line. A great effort by the former champion. Mello will live to fight another day. We are living in a new era in regards to the United States Championship on SmackDown. The main event, Jey Uso era, as Jey waltz into Survivor Series and retains his championship. Can't get enough Universe Mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more Universe than ever before. Become a No Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of Universe Mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. Well, coming up next here at Survivor Series, the Intercontinental Championship set to be defended. The new champ, the big Aussie, Brunson Reed, one-on-one -on -one with the number one contender, Solo Sokoa. This is not the first time their paths have crossed. It was in the month of September. They met in the midst of a gauntlet matchup, a power bomb that seemingly went wrong from Brunson Reed to Solo Sokoa. Nothing fancy about it, but something about the landing seemingly broke a rib of Solo and led him into an Intercontinental Championship matchup one week later, a weakened man. Dirty Dominic Mysterio certainly took advantage of that, inevitably retained the title, over the injured Solo Sokoa at the season premiere of Raw. Dirty Dom tried for a beatdown after the matchup and did inflict some damage until the arrival of the big Aussie. Brunson Reed started to make a little bit of a pattern at a drop in Dominic Mysterio with a tsunami, eventually earned himself a number one contenders matchup and earned himself an opportunity at the Intercontinental Championship. Well, just a few weeks ago on Raw, Brunson Reed surviving some outside interference that leads to tonight's War Games matchup and was able to keep down Dirty Dom to win the Intercontinental title. But just this past Monday, Brunson Reed, Brunson Reed excuse us, was reminded of the events of the season premiere upwards of a month ago. Solo Sokoa resurfacing, drawing a line in the sand, saying anybody who was the Intercontinental Champions got my attention. Brunson, the date with destiny, is yours. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. So you gotta wonder if there's any bad blood in the mind of Solo Sokoa, any turmoil after that unintentional injury that was dished out by Brunson Reed. Solo Sokoa kept very quiet. Rumors had it that he had cracked a rib, maybe even multiple, that kept him on the shelf for several weeks. But Solo Sokoa wants another round for the Intercontinental Championship. Bronson Reed happy to oblige. Bronson Reed, I'm sure, was feeling a little guilt, feeling that he was responsible, that Solo Sokoa went into that matchup with Dominic Mysterio, a weakened man. Reed never won to turn away a fight. Solo drew a line in the sand this past Monday night on Raw. That's all Reed needed to hear. First Intercontinental Championship matchup as Brunson Reed will walk down the aisle in moments to defend that gold for the first time since winning it. But that man, Solo Sokoa, has contested for it in the past, has left empty-handed. He is not looking for that same story to be written here at Survivor Series. Back in action for the first time since the season premiere of Raw, Solo wants gold. But that is certainly a wish that is easier said than done. When you are in there with a man who has taken Raw by storm all year long. The Big Aussie, Big Bronson Reed. For weeks, for months, we touted Reed's past accolades, a former NXT North American champion, but now we can tout his current accolades, the new Intercontinental Champion. 
Two weeks to go from tomorrow. Reed won that gold, and now already he is in the line of fire of challengers. First up, Solo Sokoa. And it may be last up if the enforcer has his way. Solo hungry for his singles opportunity on Raw. Hungry for championship gold. Maybe feeling he was cheated out of a fair shot upwards of a month ago. Reed happy to oblige. The Intercontinental Championship now on the line here at Survivor Series. Let us send things down to ring announcer Alicia Taylor for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Las Vegas, Nevada. Weighing in at 250 pounds, Solo. And his opponent from Black Forest, South Australia, weighing in at 330 pounds, the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Bronson Reed. And that bell sounds, I hope we reinforce the ring because we got two heavyweights set to run at each other like King Kong and Godzilla for that Intercontinental Championship. Referee Rod Zapata wearing the zebra stripes for this championship out here at Survivor Series. It has already been one hell of a night in the middle of the Kia Center and we are far from done. Intercontinental Championship on the line. The Enforcer, the Street Champ, Solo Sokoa, your challenger. The Big Aussie, Brunson Reed, the champion. The bell has sounded. We are underway with this championship matchup. As we talked about, you got to wonder if there's any bad blood, any turmoil in the mind of Solo Sokoa, knowing that it was that powerbomb by Brunson Reed that started the cracked rib, that started that injury for Solo. That is seemingly what Solo points at, puts the exclamation point on, as the reason he was walking into that matchup a week later with Dirty Dom with taped up ribs. Let us not forget that that matchup between Solo and Bronson in the middle of that gauntlet, all the way back in September, progressed for a few more minutes. Solo was victorious over Bronson Reed, then went on to meet Braun Strowman in the final matchup of the gauntlet and won that as well. You gotta imagine what that did for Solo's injuries. Nonetheless, a little bit of bad blood can certainly be brushed over. Solo Sokoa can be victorious here tonight. Brunson Reed happy to oblige, as we mentioned. Gave Solo exactly what he wanted. Reed understands the frustration that Solo may have about coming up short. Back at the season premiere and not winning the Intercontinental Championship. So Reed going to give him a shot tonight. Reed also going to give him a brick house to run into moments ago. And Brunson all over Solo. Solo obviously cleared for action or he would not be inside the squared circle, but you gotta wonder if there's any nagging pain from that previous injury. Brunson Reed is Brunson Reed. He's a big man inside of that ring and his offense is powerful. Solo Sokoa feels Brunson Reed getting splat on top of him time and time again throughout this matchup. Well, I don't know how that's gonna go for the number one contender. Such is life, such is the in-ring action. Solo wants the opportunity, he's gonna have to fight. And I don't think Solo is afraid of it. We have seen him in some battles throughout this year. Whether it was standing alongside or, no pun intended, but standing solo against the Bloodline multiple times on Raw. I should say against the Judgment Day multiple times on Raw. Now in this fight with Brunson Reed tonight here at Survivor Series as Reed hustles up and drops the hammer. And this time last year, Brunson Reed wasn't even a part of the WWE roster. You want to talk about making a name for yourself all over again when you return to Raw all the way back in March. Win, lose, or draw, we've seen Brunson in there with some of the best Raw has to offer. And clearly, by the gold he walked to the ring with tonight, has proven himself in the red brand. Solo Sokoa wants his share. And that is why he made the trip to Survivor Series. Solo just needs to ground Bronson Reed. It's one thing to knock him off his feet. It's a whole other thing to keep him there. If anybody can do it, look no further than the street champ. Wait a minute here. Samoan spiked by Solo. 
No hesitation, no waste in motion. Solo damn near won this matchup in a jiffy, but Brunson Reed still alive. Solo Sokoa did not come to Survivor Series to play games. The spike right to Reed, and maybe any normal man would have been kept down, but Brunson Reed clearly above normal. Solo Sokoa might not have gotten the victory off that spike, but what he did do is emphatically put the advantage of this matchup on his side. Now Solo just needs to rub salt in the wounds. Bronson Reed, dare I say, starting to look lifeless as Solo Sokoa sees the opportunity. He's a shark that smells blood in the water. Bronson Reed on the canvas, and what did we just say? What, a minute ago? One thing to knock him down, a whole other thing to keep him there. Solo may have found a way to keep him down tonight. Sending Bronson into the corner. And Solo Sokoa just going to throw his body weight at the big Aussie. And down goes the big man. And now Solo heading to the top. Reed damn near halfway across the ring. Solo going to get some ground on that headbutt. And once again, coming within inches of the Intercontinental Championship, but Bronson Reed is still in this match. Man, that was a leap of faith by Solo. Bronson Reed, Dan near on the other side of the ring. Solo really making up some ground coverage off that headbutt. And now Solo with his eyes locked could be going for a second spike. If he hit that, it would have been over. Reed off the reversal. Reed, power bomb. Familiar territory as Solo Sokoa feels the wrath of the big Aussie when this matchup progresses. We knew this was going to be a fight. We knew this was going to be physical. These two horses throwing heavyweights at each other. Solo center to the corner. Brunson Reed. Oh man. Reed's mind is a spinning. And if he has his way, some bodies might be as well. The big man's on the top rope with Solo. Superplex dead center of the ring. And he's not done. Full head of steam. This guy is a living, breathing Mack truck. But Solo again kicks out. Some damn close near falls in this matchup. I thought that was it. Superplex, a little bit of salt on top of it. I thought Reed had the recipe for success, but Solo's own drive and own motivation to win that Intercontinental Championship tonight pushes him forward. Bronson Reed, headbutt right to Solo. Probably didn't feel good for either man. Tries to back it up in the corner. Solo dodges it. Solo with some big strength to send Reed into the ropes. Got to come in the effort. Catches Reed with an elbow. Once again, knocks Reed down to size. Another near fall in this matchup. How many has that been? Both of these men just throwing live rounds. Louisville sluggers at each other. You should expect nothing less. Once again, Reed. Getting turned inside out. How many people in the WWE roster are going to be able to do that? A hip toss to somebody the size of Reed. I'll give you a spoiler. It's a very short list. Solo Sokoa recalculating his game plan. Alex for a spinning solo and it works out. Instead of going for the cover, Solo wants an exclamation point. Going for that second spike. Again, Reed counters. On the shoulders. Air raid crash drops Solo on his neck. Reed going to the top for a tsunami. How? How is Solo still in this match? You have got to be kidding. These two men running at each other like bulls let free from their cages tonight. And somehow, they both still got some energy left. 
Reed survives the spike. Solo survives the tsunami. Reed set to the ropes. Pounce! You can find Solo in the fifth row. Holy hell. Man, I'll tell you, Survivor Series delayed one night due to a power outage in our studio. Well, let's make it up for it. All these superstars chomping at the bit to get to the action, and they ain't wasting no motions tonight. Reed off the middle rope, sidestepped by Solo. Solo with an overhand shot. Just needs to find one more exclamation point like maneuver. Just something that he can do to keep Brunson Reed down. The spike didn't do it. Spinning Solo didn't do it. A headbutt off the top didn't do it. Solo with a, just a body shot and a headbutt takes Reed down once more. See if fatigue setting in, Reed needing the ropes just to get to his feet. Solo collapses Bronson. Solo Sokoa is feeling confident. And why wouldn't he? Oh, wait a minute. Bronson Reed catching Solo with a small package. He got him. He got him. Solo took his eye off the ball and he paid for it. Everything these men threw at each other. The confidence of Solo making him slip up and awards the pin to Brunson Reed. A heartbreaking loss for Solo, but such is life. Bronson Reed proving to be the better man, surviving an onslaught from the street champ. Walks in a Survivor Series and retains the Intercontinental Gold. Every year, the entire world waits with bated breath for one night, one event that stands above the rest in spectacle and stakes. On Saturday night, January 4th, 2025, the most anticipated and electrifying event on the WWE calendar kicks off the new year, the Royal Rumble. Emanating from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in the heart of New York City. This year's Royal Rumble promises to be an unforgettable chapter in WWE history. 30 men, 30 women, two Royal Rumble matches. The stakes, a golden ticket to the main event of WrestleMania in Philadelphia this March. Who will outlast 29 other competitors to etch their name into the history books? Who will seize the moment and secure their path to WrestleMania? Join us live on the 4th of January as Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present the 2025 Royal Rumble. I cannot wait for the new year to kick off Saturday night, January the 4th from Madison Square Garden. The road to WrestleMania will begin at the Royal Rumble. But that is then and this is now. We still got action on hand here at Survivor Series. Coming up next, it is the first blood matchup between the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre, and the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. These two men have been at each other's throats from the spring to the summer, bleeding into the fall. Who will draw first blood here at Survivor Series? Frustration, failure, an unyielding determination to conquer an adversary. This is the story of Drew McIntyre and Ilya Dragunov. Two warriors that are bound by blood 
and fury. In the spring, the unthinkable happened. The Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov, defeated the Scottish warrior, not once, but twice. Each victory, knocking McIntyre further away from his quest to become World Heavyweight Champion all over again. It was the final straw that broke the warrior's back. The simmering rage of Drew McIntyre erupted when Dragunov, after falling short in his pursuit of glory against Gunther, found himself the target of Drew's wrath. A changed man, McIntyre sought to exercise the demons of his past and pave his path back to championship gold. But Dragunov, proud, unyielding, would not take this act of war lying down. SummerSlam became the stage where Dragunov came for retribution, seeking his pound of flesh. But McIntyre, ruthless and unrelenting, proved that he was a different beast. A warning to anyone daring to block his road back to the top. Left battered and bruised, Dragunov vanished from the ring. A phoenix preparing to rise again. And rise he did, with fire in his eyes, a mission forged in pain. The Mad Dragon has been relentless, willing to endure any battle, any assault, just for the chance to face Drew McIntyre one more time. And now, the chance has arrived, in a match where there are no pinfalls, no submissions, no countouts, and no disqualifications. A stipulation chosen by Dragunov himself, where victory is sealed only by making your opponent draw first blood. Dragunov seeks to make McIntyre feel the agony, the humiliation, the torment that he has endured. McIntyre determined to slay the dragon and finally clear his path to glory, prepares for what he hopes is the last chapter in their brutal saga. The bad blood between them has reached its boiling point and the canvas of Survivor Series may be painted in red. Drew McIntyre, Ilya Dragunov, the next chapter will be written in blood. You can cut the tension with a knife in the middle of the Kia Center right now as this first blood match is about to commence. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Ayr, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, the Scottish Warrior. McIntyre told WWE.com yesterday afternoon that he is not here at Survivor Series for some long, drawn-out warrant of attrition. McIntyre said that he is coming here to Survivor Series to end Ilya Dragunov once and for all. McIntyre promised the most brutal showing that the Scottish Warrior has ever delivered. All the while, I'm sure that Ilya Dragunov is coming here tonight with all intentive purposes of performing his greatest symphony yet and slaying this beast in Drew McIntyre once and for all. No pinfalls, no submissions, countouts, or DQ. This matchup only ends when one man draws first blood. McIntyre ready for a battle and the warrior that opposes him approaches the squared circle the czar the mad dragon Ilya Dragunov and his opponent from Moscow Russia weighing in at 187 pounds It has been a year full of ups and downs for Ilya Dragunov, but one thing is for sure. Well, hold on here, wait a minute. McIntyre making a beeline for Dragunov in the aisle way. 
The bell has sounded. McIntyre starting this match off on his own accord. Jumping Ilya on his way to the ring, turning the opening moment to this matchup into an absolute mugging. Well, unfortunately, we should expect nothing less from Drew McIntyre. He has ambushed Dragunov, left him laying, left him in a pool of his own blood two weeks ago on SmackDown. McIntyre is here at Survivor Series for a short and sweet statement. Looking to get the thorn that has been in his side for months out and away for good. Ilya sent into the ring as McIntyre is instituting one-way traffic. But here's Dragunov trying to fight back. Not even getting his ring jacket off yet. As we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it around the Kia Center. The bell has sounded. Referee Chad Patton in control. This contester, barely we should even say control. He's only there to call for a bell when blood is shed between these two men. Unfortunately for McIntyre, he's got to be feeling the utmost confidence. As we mentioned, making Dragon off bleed two weeks ago on SmackDown. How does that go for Ilya? Is there still flesh that is not fully healed? If Drew McIntyre has his way, he is just going to beat down Dragon off and continue to do so until buckets are being poured here in Orlando. This is what this rivalry has developed to. Ilya, I'm sure, would have originally been satisfied with just a one-on-one -on -one wrestling match. But McIntyre's the one who drew the blood and pushed Ilya over the edge to making this decision. Steel chair off the skull of the man Dragon. You remember it was Ilya who defeated Sheamus, who represented McIntyre two weeks ago on SmackDown. Dragunov was then awarded the choice of the stipulation. Dare I say, the first blood choice may come back to haunt him. I understand what's going through the mind of Ilya. He wants his pound of flesh. He wants to see Drew bleed the same color that Ilya bled. And drag it off, ragdoll and McIntyre down. Drag it off, going to the top rope. Going for a beatdown and could be looking for internal bleeding here at Survivor Series. A senton on Drew, follow that up with a shot to the spine. Ilya finally starting to get some, some punishment dished out in this matchup. Going for an H-bomb, McIntyre reversed. These two men will stop at nothing to tear each other apart as Drew sends Ilya over the top rope again. All the times McIntyre has left Ilya laying. It all started at Money in the Bank, and Dragunov has been seeking retribution ever since. Unfortunately, that has been extremely hard to come by. And all no. McIntyre clearing off the announce table as if he needs to. There's Dragunov here trying to win, ensure that disaster is not afoot. Putting Drew McIntyre on the announce table. There's a shot right to the jaw. Now, a lot of wrestling holds and a lot of other things in this matchup are really unnecessary tonight. Main goal, as harsh as it sounds, is to rip apart your opponent's flesh. And these two men, with so much turmoil between them, are certainly going to dish out some extra punishment on the road to dishing that blood tonight. Oh no, both of them with steel chairs in hand and Ilya Dragunov with one. McIntyre doing his damnedest to absorb it. And just tackles Ilya Dragunov down. McIntyre said this was not going to be a long fight. He was here to rip apart Dragunov, short sweep, and move on. Something that Drew has been wanting to do for months. And now just beat it up Ilya with the 10 beats of the bouncer and on the apron. Ilya Dragunov has certainly seen better days. From being jumped in the aisle way, this matchup has been predominantly Drew McIntyre. We've seen some signs of life out of Ilya, but I'd say for the majority of it, he's barely gotten out of the blocks. Dragunov trying to avoid any more shots with that steel chair, drops Drew with a DDT. 
McIntyre avoids drawing it off Claymore kick and wait a minute oh no oh no dragon off been busted wide open you've got to be kidding here is your winner the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre that sucks that absolutely sucks and McIntyre is now chasing a pool of Ilya Dragunov's blood and continuing to beat him down on the outside. Oh man, Dragunov's been cracked bad. That Claymore kick must have hit on the previously open wound of Ilya Dragunov. It was only less than two weeks ago that Dragunov was opened up by Drew on SmackDown and now Ilya is leaving pools of blood all around the Kia Center. Well, the damn match is over. McIntyre got what he wanted. A short, sweet, and to-the-point fight. But clearly, Drew is not satisfied yet. Attacking Ilya in the aisle way. Dragon off, barely getting out of the gate. But look at the will and the desire of the man Dragon trying to fight back, realizing that the match is done, but still trying to ensure that he gets some pound of flesh out of Drew tonight. But McIntyre, obviously feeling more fresh, obviously in it, the driver's seat at the moment. Referee Chad Patton and damn near everybody in Orlando helpless to stop this. McIntyre's been daydreaming about this beatdown and about getting rid of Elia for months. Damn it! Orlando letting Drew have it. As this post-match beatdown continues, McIntyre continuing to rip apart Ilya with a chair. Dragunov trying to come alive. Misses for the Torpedo Moscow. Gets shoved right in the corner of the damn desk. This is ridiculous. This wasn't even a match. This was Drew McIntyre pushing his weight around. Ilya Dragunov is bleeding profusely. And McIntyre could not care less. On the announce table. Somebody's got to put a damn stop to this. Pile driver through the table. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is the complete opposite of what Dragunov has been trying to get for months. A wrestling match with McIntyre to seek retribution. Instead, Drew pushed his weight around. When Dragunov called for first blood, Drew took advantage of the stipulation, ambushed Ilya, turned this into a mugging, and may have just ended the career of Ilya Dragunov as we know it. This afternoon in Midtown Manhattan, the Cruiserweight Classic finale commenced. The Cardiac Kid, Wesley, one-on-one -on -one with the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Of course, the tournament finals itself at stake, but also Tyler Bate's Cruiserweight Championship of the World. What an incredible matchup it was. If you haven't seen it, the replay available now right here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. Wesley and Tyler Bate emptying their tanks. But at the end of the day, the Cardiac Kid, Wesley, rising from the ashes, able to keep down a man who has been so dominant throughout the tournament. A first round knockout last year, all the way to being the winner and being crowned new Cruiserweight Champion. Congratulations, Wesley. And that takes us to what happened for No Nation Gaming Channel members exclusively on the Survivor Series kickoff show earlier tonight, the six-man gauntlet matchup that came down to NXT's Javon Evans and TNA Wrestling's Zachary Wentz. 
Wentz pulling out the W, securing himself number one contendership for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Now, the men who were once known as the Rascals will be on a collision course for each other in the near future for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. But still so much action to come here in Orlando, Florida. It's tippy time. The WWE Women's Championship is on the line. You want to talk about winning tournaments? Look no further than the number one contender, the 2024 Queen of the Ring winner, the center of the universe, the buff Barbie, Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton in one night this past September defeated Liv Morgan in the semifinal round. Raquel Rodriguez in the finals, not only winning the crown of the queen, but of course punching her ticket months in advance for right here tonight at Survivor Series. Tiffany Stratton has continued to climb the ladder of success on Monday Night Raw all year long. She has been in the ring with some of the best of them. She has defeated Bianca Belair via countout. Bianca has defeated her by pinfall. This is their third encounter, third encounter, it should say, in this calendar year. Who's gonna win this rubber match? <laughs> Tiffany may be on the top of her game, but I know one woman who is not looking for the clock to turn to tiffy time, and that's the EST, the WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. Bianca back and forth with one Cora Jade for months on Monday Night Raw. And that rivalry really brought to a new level last month at Bad Blood, which eventually led to a steel cage match less than two weeks ago on Monday night where Bianca Belair outlasted Cora Jade to capture the WWE Women's Championship. A prize that Bianca was chasing damn near all year long, and it had slipped through her grasp time and time again. But now Bianca, once again on top, once again the rightful holder of the gold, and quickly walks into her first defense, knowing that the queen of the ring, Tiffany Stratton, was awaiting around the corner. Another championship on the line as we send things back down to Alicia Taylor. Introducing the challenger from Prior Lake, Minnesota, Tiffany Stratton. And her opponent from Knoxville, Tennessee, the WWE Women's Champion, Bianca Belair! We are locked and loaded for another championship matchup here at Survivor Series War Games. Bianca Belair defends the WWE Women's Championship for the very first time in this reign against Tiffany Stratton. We've seen a lot of championships changing hands over the last several weeks on Raw and SmackDown, but so far tonight, it has been retention across the board. Will Bianca Belair continue down that path, or will Tiffany Stratton play spoiler? Talked about the little bit of history between these two women, Stratton defeating Bianca all the way back in the summer in a count-out victory in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. About a month later, Bianca Belair pinning Stratton in a, another contest on Monday Night Raw. And now, all these months later, their paths cross again for the highest honor that the women's division of the Red Brand houses. Bianca Belair has not come this far to let the championship slip through her fingers that fast. Remember, she won the title, defeated Rhea Ripley all the way back at SummerSlam, only for Cora Jade to cash in the briefcase about five minutes later. Now Bianca, with Cora in her rear view, looks to get through Tiffany Stratton tonight. And maybe enjoy some time as the women's champion. But Stratton, however, looking, as we mentioned, to play spoiler. 
And if anybody can do it, look no further than the Queen of the Ring. This is a woman who made it through the likes of Natalia, Bailey, Liv Morgan, and Raquel Rodriguez throughout the Queen of the Ring tournament in August into September. Has rode that wave of momentum ever since. Be rightful number one contender here at Survivor Series. Stratton trying to outstrafe Bianca this time. Just ragdolling her damn near halfway across the ring. I'll tell you what, Bianca known as one of the strongest, fastest, roughest, and toughest, and not just Monday Night Raw, but all the WWE. If anybody can give her a run for her money, former Olympic-level gymnast in Tiffany Stratton can certainly do so. Stratton looking to win all the marbles tonight. The highest honor, the Women's Championship. And certainly a tough task ahead, but Stratton's looking good thus far. Power bomb on the EST. Bianca Belair in action just this past Monday night on Raw as well. Big victory over Ivy Nile. Stratton making her way out to the entrance just to give Bianca Belair a little glimpse into the future. Send a little message to the champion ahead of Survivor Series here tonight. Stratton all over the EST, not giving her a moment to breathe, and why would she? The challenger not looking to underestimate her champion as Bianca Belair struggles to get to her feet and Stratton soars through the skies of Orlando, Florida. There's a kick out by the EST. Great strength, great power shown in that kick out, but Tiffany Stratton, I am sure, took a level of energy away from Bianca Belair. This beatdown keeps up. Stratton may be on her way to winning her first championship on Monday Night Raw. Bianca up against the buckle. Stratton just closing the gap. And Bianca now. We're talking about closing the gap. Just muscles Stratton right to the corner. Bianca Belair has been involved in that rivalry back and forth, really getting personal with Cora Jade. Now with that in her rear view, just looks to turn away Tiffany Stratton and retain her title here with the lights on bright at Survivor Series. Bianca. Great strength again. Power slam on Stratton into the pinfall. Not even a one count that time. Stratton not going to give Bianca the confidence boost of even getting a one, maybe a two, and certainly not a three. There's a spine buster by the EST. Wait a minute. Uh, hold on here. Why is Cora Jade even here in Orlando, Florida? Cora Jade making her way out of the ring. She's distracted Bianca Belair. Stratton from behind. Stratton going to steal the championship. Not just yet. Bianca kicks out. A momentary distraction, but now Bianca Belair, sense of urgency, goes behind, face first, goes the good looks of Stratton. And a kick out by the queen of the ring. Oh man, business just picked up Cora Jade. It was off your screen, ladies and gentlemen, but referees and staff getting Cora away from ringside, trying to make sure she is not an X Factor in this matchup. But what she did just do, momentarily distracted Bianca, might have lit a fire underneath of her. Now Tiffany Stratton looks to take advantage. Almost had the championship that time. Tiffany, prettiest moonsault ever, does not hit. Bianca, off the reversal, goes behind. A fire has been lit underneath this matchup, thanks to the appearance of the former champion in Cora Jade. Bianca not letting the demons of her past slow her down as she takes it to the sky here at Survivor Series. Bianca may have been distracted, but now she's brushing it off, and now she's letting the demons of her past, as we called them, fueled her and let it link, I should say channeling that energy and focus it on Tiffany. Spear. Another pinfall attempt by the EST. We're not done yet. Man, oh man, I'm not going to have a voice the time we get to Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Bianca Belair, fast paced on Tiffany Stratton. Stratton creates a little distance. And now looks to outmatch Bianca. Nice side slam by the challenger. 
Certainly a tension in the air that just came over Orlando, Florida after Cora Jade's slight appearance. Now wherever Bianca's mindset is at, she needs to refocus on the task at hand, and that's tonight's challenger. That's the number one contender, the 2024 Queen of the Ring winner, Tiffany Stratton. Stratton just needs to slow down Bianca. It may be her best choice. You saw that Bianca felt a sense of urgency, felt that fire brewing and decided to rev it up. Stratton's gotta change the energy, take the wind out of her sails, deflate this audience. And another near fall. Stratton has gotten close on a few occasions, but a three count not to be had just yet here in the middle of the Kia Center. Wait a minute. Another prettiest moonsault attempt does not land. Bianca off the misstep. KOD has Bianca just retained her title. No, she has not, at least for the moment. Stratton is still into it. This crowd in Orlando is right. The women's wrestling is on fire here at Survivor Series. A brutalizing War Games matchup that kicked us off. And now these two women from Monday Night Raw take center stage. Counter by Stratton. Again, Bianca's on the shoulders. Reversal. Pulls the rug out from underneath of her. Damn near almost had her. Bianca hustles up. Splash! Down goes Stratton again. Another pinfall. Kick out at one. The action tonight has been high energy, high octane, fast paced many a times. Stratton needing the ropes just to get to her feet as Bianca Belair is in hot pursuit. Sends the challenger to the outside. Bianca's going back to the well with a jive over the top rope. What a match thus far for the WWE Women's Championship. Reversal by Stratton. Sustained momentum has been hard to come by in this contest. It's been a lot of back and forth. Bianca in hot pursuit of Tiffany. Drops her with a lariat on the outside. The EST looking to get things done emphatically between the ropes. Bianca now heading to the top. The EST feeling confident. Strat looking to close the gap. Bianca's agility saves her day. And once again tackles Stratton down. Oh, wait a minute. This is how Reed defeated Solo earlier tonight. Small package here. Bianca kicks out. Man, it's as if Cora Jade's arrival just stuck a sense of urgency into both of these women, Stratton included, because the energy has just been upped minute after minute in this match. And who's gonna get that everlasting blow, that final shot that puts the exclamation point on this contest and gives us a women's champion? Tiffany Stratton bringing Bia Bianca Belair into the corner. Well, Bianca not taking kindly and just drops Stratton on her ass. Tiffany looking up at the lights of the Kia Center. Bianca up top once more. Dive and a splash. But it's not over yet. Stratton continues to persevere. You may not like your attitude, but you gotta respect the talent. Reversal by Tiffany. Bianca set to the rope. Stratton tackles her down with the elbow. The buff Barbie, Tiffany Stratton, picking her spots, saw that shooting star coming, got the knees up, may have taken the wind out of the proverbial sails of the champion. And again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but this is Tiffany's best case scenario. Slow this matchup down, as Bianca is clearly doing the opposite. Bianca Belair down and out. Stratton's feeling confident enough to head off the top herself. Swanton bomb to win the title. How many near falls are we gonna see? Bianca Belair fought long and hard for that title and she isn't looking to let anything take it away from her tonight. Bianca survived the Swanton, but Stratton 
Collapses her out of the corner. Corkscrew. Bianca's abdominal has taken a beating the last few moments. Another kick out, however. Frustration was written on the face of Stratton as you saw it. And Tiffany coming a little bit unglued, just trying to choke the life out of Bianca in the corner. Bianca may be surviving, certainly not thriving, however, as Tiffany Stratton all over the champion here at Survivor Series. Once again, Bianca is in trouble as Stratton is eyeing up the corner. Bianca's best days may be behind her in this match. Third attempt, and it finally delivers. Prettiest mood salt ever. Tiffany Stratton has uncrowned Bianca Belair. I don't want to give an assist to Cora Jade because Stratton wrestled that matchup on her own. But ever since the arrival of Cora, just for that moment, Bianca's energy was just completely different in this matchup. Her mind may have been elsewhere. But regardless of that, the result remains the same. From Queen of the Ring to Women's Champion, Tiffany Stratton has been crowned here at Survivor Series. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. Well, as we begin the road to the Royal Rumble, we are set to make a pit stop at our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., live on Saturday night, December the 7th from the Capital One Center. It is Saturday night's main event. What a night that is going to be on the road to the Royal Rumble, which again comes your way Saturday night, January the 4th, 2025. But we are set for more action here at Survivor Series. We saw the bedlam that took place inside the women's war games earlier tonight. Now, the men of the All-Stars of Monday Night Raw take center stage. When that music hits, an eerie feeling comes across each and every arena that they enter. A group that has been fueled by their greed for gold and power. That has led to ambushes, beatdowns, pushing their weight around and doing whatever the hell they want on Monday Night Raw. The World Tag Team Champions, the Prince Finn Balor, the Punishment, Damian Priest, the Judgment Day, approach the impending war. This past Monday night on Raw, Damian Priest keeping down the visionary Seth freaking Rollins in an oh so important advantage contest. Priest, Balor, Dominic, and AJ will have the advantage in the upcoming War Games matchup. Damian Priest and Finn Balor, dare I say, have made their bed. Now they gotta sleep in it. Their at list of enemies has continued to grow. It's a mile long on Monday Night Raw. Tonight they can test a group of all-stars from CM Punk to Kevin Owens to Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins. The World Tag Team Champions have certainly laid out a path of destruction on the red brand and now they may meet their doomsday. But with the help 
of the WWE Champion AJ Styles. It may be them that is dishing out the doom, that is dishing out the punishment. The phenomenal one. The man who holds one of the richest prizes in this industry today, the WWE title. Styles has found himself aligned with an old ally in Finn Balor, along with Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest. Common enemies bring together strange alliances. As AJ Styles has linked up with the men in black and purple, we can say the same about the men that oppose them tonight. But one thing is for sure, AJ Styles has, full pun intended, had a phenomenal 2024, and he's hoping to continue that right here tonight at Survivor Series. The last two years, Styles has seen success at this very event, won the United States title right here at Survivor Series 12 months ago. Will himself, along with the Judgment Day, find themselves getting their hand raised here tonight. Each and every man on the opposite side of the ring has a laundry list of bones to pick with AJ Styles in the Judgment Day. Here we look at Sami Zayn, a former Intercontinental Champion, who for all we know may still be the champion today if it weren't for the antics of the black and purple unit. The title stolen away by Dirty Dom back in the month of July thanks to the help of Priest, Balor, and even Rhea Ripley. Sami Zayn has been out for retribution ever since, has contested the Judgment Day for gold, has fallen short at the finish line, has been the casualty of beatdowns and assaults. Ones that Sami Zayn has not soon forgotten about. And is looking to get even in the middle of this Monday Night Raw main event at Survivor Series. But Sami Zayn did not make the trip to the Magic City all alone. As we approach the 2025 Royal Rumble, we look at the 2024 Royal Rumble match winner. A man who won the WWE Championship in the main event of WrestleMania, defended it all the way till July. Kevin Owens with a very interesting story in this Survivor Series match. He teams up with two of his biggest rivals throughout 2024. We know that respect was developed between Owens and Punk throughout the summer but seemingly there is wounds that have yet to heal between KO and Rollins. Owens has really not been public about his inability to mend that fence with Seth freaking Rollins. We know Rollins extended the hand a few weeks ago on Raw and Owens denied, but all we can assume is that Owens and Rollins have at least decided to let bygones be bygones at least for tonight so they can take out this common enemy in AJ Styles on the Judgment Day. The hits just keep on coming. The names just keep on getting bigger. And this is why we house this matchup as an all-star meeting of Monday Night Raw superstars. CM Punk back at the Survivor Series event for the first time in many, many years. He has found success at this event years prior. He won the WWE Championship here. His first WWE pay-per-view event was Survivor Series all the way back in 2006. But now in 2024, Punk stands alongside Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Seth freaking Rollins in a war he could not have foreseen was coming when he made his return to the WWE all the way back in January. But the former WWE champion 
who is still itching for another round with AJ Styles, realizes this is the path he must travel in hopes to eventually get another shot at the WWE title. CM Punk has not forgotten about the ambush by Dominic last month, has not forgotten about the turmoil with Damian Priest and Finn Balor, and has certainly not taken his eyes off the man who put him through the announce table this past Monday night on Raw. It all comes down to this. The bedlam that has consumed Monday Night Raw has led to the War Games meeting. Styles in the Judgment Day versus Owens, Zayn, Rollins, and Punk. The match beyond is here. Let us take a look at how we got to War Games. All year long, one unit has loomed like a shadow over Monday Night Raw. An unrelenting force, a disruptive powerhouse known as the Judgment Day. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and Dominic Mysterio have forged a path of dominance, leaving chaos in their wake and ruling with an iron fist. Championship seized, rivalries shattered, and any who dare to challenge their supremacy met with ruthless consequences. A fleeting alliance with Seth freaking Rollins ended in betrayal, with the visionary left as a symbol of their merciless rule. But Rollins is not one to forget. The revolutionary now seeks retribution, and he's not alone. His allies begin with two men with scores to settle of their own, Kevin Owens, the fearless brawler who won't let past ambushes go unanswered, and Sami Zayn, the fighter who has felt the sting of stolen glory. Since September, the WWE Championship has been at the center of another battle on Monday Night Raw. A clash between the phenomenal AJ Styles and the best in the world, CM Punk. Punk's quest for gold led him straight into the path of the Judgment Day, and he discovered firsthand the brutality that comes with opposing the men in black and purple. With old wounds reopened and pride on the line, Punk has found himself surrounded by unlikely allies. United by a shared enemy, Rollins, Owens, Zayn, and Punk have come together to take the fight to their tormentors. The Judgment Day, bolstered by the reigning WWE Champion AJ Styles, have answered the call. This will not just be a match, it will be a war! Issues must be resolved, rivalries must be settled, and there's only one battlefield capable of containing this chaos! At Survivor Series, the legendary concept known as War Games, makes its triumphant return. Blood feuds, alliances forged in fire, and a four-on-four -four warfare in its purest form. The match beyond has arrived. Seth freaking Rollins, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and CM Punk take on Dominic Mysterio, the World Tag Team Champions Damian Priest and Finn Balor, along with the WWE Champion, AJ Styles, let the war begin! The following contest is the men's War Games match. The rules of the match are as follows. Two teams will be contained in separate cages with one member of each team starting the match. At regular intervals, alternating members from each team will be released to enter the match. The first member to enter will come from the advantaged team. Once all competitors have entered, War Games officially begins! 
The match can be won by pinball or submission. Exiting the cage will result in a forfeit. And now, let the war games begin! Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles locked up in the short cage. And somehow it is their genius strategy to have this buffoon start the damn match. Nonetheless, Dirty Dom has arrived. Introducing first, we're presenting the Judgment Day from San Diego, California. Weighing in at 200 pounds, Dirty The former Intercontinental Champion, of course turned away by Brunson Reed two weeks ago on Raw, but before Dirty Dom, I am sure, intends to get back the Intercontinental title, he must focus on the task at hand, which is the War Games Contest. We saw how chaotic and unpredictable this match could be earlier tonight with the women of SmackDown. Now the men from Raw take center stage, and Dirty Dominic Mysterio looks like he's seen a ghost inside of that thing. Or maybe that's a look of satisfaction. I really can't tell. Either way, it's an ugly mug. But either way, Dirty Dom set to kick off. And on the opposite side of the ring, a man who has been headhunting the Judgment Day for the last several weeks. The visionary, the revolutionary, Seth freaking Rollins. And from Davenport, Iowa, weighing in at 217 pounds, Last year at this very event, Seth Rollins walked in and walked out as the WWE Champion. But this year, it is a more personal battle. Damian Priest puts Seth Rollins on the shelf for upwards of two months on the roll after SummerSlam. Seth Rollins at one point in time had himself a partnership with the Judgment Day that obviously went up in smokes and Rollins is not interested in being a pawn in their game. Instead, he is looking for the hunted to become the hunter. And Seth Rollins fully intends on eradicating the Judgment Day before our very eyes. The landscape is set for the second of two War Games matches here at Survivor Series. The bell has sounded Dirty Dom and Seth freaking Rollins kick us off inside the two rings with one giant steel cage. And Seth Rollins is not going to hold any punches. Seth Rollins, double spring. My goodness, what a maneuver. Rollins looking like a gymnast inside of that ring. Or we should say rings, plural. Rollins all over Dirty Dom. And we should expect nothing less. I think it is a daring strategy to have Dominic, of all people, the one starting this matchup. And I'm not trying to take away from the talents of the former Intercontinental Champion, but you got the WWE Champion AJ Styles and the World Tag Team Champions Balor and Priest inside of the cage. Maybe trying to save their energy for the back half of this matchup where pinfalls and submissions can take place, but nonetheless, Seth Rollins all over Dominic Mysterio in the opening moments. Sending Dom right into the steel. Dominic Mysterio may be looking like hamburger meat the time the visionary gets done with him. He's just getting thrown from pillar to post, from ring to another. Struggling to get to his feet as Rollins, like a lion awaiting his lunch, and there's a counter by Dom. Of course, the Judgment Day, as we mentioned, have the advantage thanks to Damian Priest's victory this past Monday night. And speaking of such, 
the punishment of the Judgment Day, is marching his way to the ring. Dominic Mysterio tries to go after Rollins. Rollins sidesteps him. Dom into the cage again. Rollins gonna turn his sights to the man who put him on the shelf back in the month of August. Rollins has gotta be feeling extra motivated after that matchup on Raw did not go his way. Leaving his team at a disadvantage tonight. Such interesting storylines for Seth Rollins and company just in their team alone. The unsettled history between Rollins and Kevin Owens, several of battles, several of wars, I should say, throughout this year for the WWE title. Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn have had some battles on Raw earlier this year as well. Right now, Rollins needs all the help he can get because Priest and Dominic are gonna eat him alive inside of that cage. Seth Rollins looking worse for wear. There's a miscommunication, rare one, by the Judgment Day, and it's gonna help Seth Rollins maybe come alive here inside War Games. Rollins drops Damian. Those two men really went through a war of attrition this past Monday night on Raw. And there's Dominic from behind leveling Seth. And Rollins gonna get some help as Sami Zayn hustle it up. Looking to even the playing field inside War Games. Damian Priest and Dominic double teaming the visionary. Wait a minute, Sami Zayn going underneath the ring and is looking to turn this cage match into a trip to Home Depot. Well, he's got that stop sign here. Maybe looking to use it as a weapon. I think just realized that Rollins is getting the hell beat out of him. Insane going after Dominic, the man who he has had several of battles with throughout 2024 over the Intercontinental Championship that now neither of them hold. Zane and Damian been in the ring with each other both in singles and tag matches as well. You remember last month at Bad Blood, Priest and Balor retaining their world tag team titles over Zane and Owens. Now wait a minute, hold on. Damian Priest, he's going to the top of war games. I do not like this. Priest comes crashing down on Seth. If he could go for a pinfall, I'm sure he would, because Rollins' abdominal has got to be crying for mercy. This is the unpredictability and the chaos that War Games promises. We saw it earlier tonight. We're witnessing it again. Priest coming to the save of Sammy. And right now, the Judgment Day are already ruling the ring. And they got backup coming. They got help. Finn Balor now making his way towards the ring. And he's bringing some more plunder with him. Seth Rollins trying to single out Dirty Dom. Damian Priest has got his eyes on Sami Zayn. All the while, Finn Balor. What do we say about Home Depot? I think he made a trip there before he came to the Kia Center tonight. Balor sliding that table into the ring. All the while, Damian Priest single-handedly takes out Zayn as well as Seth. Damian Priest is really coming to his own throughout 2024, even being a World Tag Team Champion. We have seen him in singles victories over the likes of Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, even Roman Reigns, dating back to the season premiere of Raw. All the Judgment Day respective members entering the matchup and just wailing away on Sami Zayn right now. Seth Rollins struggling to get to his feet. He has got to come to some help. Down goes Dom. But how much can Rollins really do? He's already been in this matchup for a number of minutes and has felt some of the worst from Priest, Dom, and now Balor. This is why the numbers are so important. An opportunity to incapacitate your opponents before decisions could even be made. Rollins and Zayn gonna get some help. And here comes the prize fighter, Kevin Owens, making his way towards War Games. Balor taking out as a double team that time. Saw Dom catch him with a pair of boots on Seth's way down. Kevin Owens has entered war games all the while. Dominic focusing on Sammy. Balor focusing on Seth. Kevin Owens and Damian Priest jockeying for position. Wait a minute, Balor's going to the top of the cage. 
I think Rollins might have put some tracks on it. I don't know what the hell one half of the champs has in mind. Rollins is in hot pursuit of Finn. Rollins getting knocked down to size. Oh, come on now. Not Finn coming off the top as well on the Seth Rollins. And Dom not even gonna give Rollins a moment to breathe all over the visionary. Meanwhile, Owens and Zayn trying to take out maybe what be, what, what may be, excuse us if we can get the words out, the biggest threat in the ring right now. And that's Damian Priest. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. A wild coyote came in full effect. We gotta do our best to keep up with all the action inside of War Games. Well, one more member of each team to enter, and we know who's coming next. The phenomenal WWE Champion awaits. And AJ Styles making his way towards the ring, hustling up. Gonna join the men in the black and purple as he wears the same colors tonight. It's Sami Zayn, not even gonna allow Styles to get out of the gate. Gonna do what you can to try to divide and conquer. Zayn working on Priest. Meanwhile, Balor and Dom still all over. Seth freaking Rollins. Rollins trying to fight his way out of enemy territory. Certainly easier said than done. Balor just unloading on Seth. Just when Rollins thinks he has a window, the Judgment Day just mug him like a pack of dogs. This is what War Games is all about. This was the chaos we expected. And if earlier tonight told us anything, is that expect the unexpected. CM Punk, of course, awaits in the cage. The last man to enter this matchup. Dominic Mysterio on Kevin Owens. Balor taking care of Sammy. Seth Rollins just trying to get to his feet. He's been in, of course, since the beginning. Fatigue written on his body language. Seth Rollins maybe go after Sammy. You saw Balor miss wildly with the double springboard. And I think that's because Rollins turned his attention to Priest. Rollins obviously with a score to settle there. But here comes the Calvary. CM Punk not only returns to Survivor Series, but enters his first War Games matchup. And CM Punk's going underneath the ring. Rollins, or I should say Punk, wants more plunder. You just hear the weapons galore. Sound like ASMR coming out of that cage. Meanwhile, AJ Styles with a springboard elbow right to Zayn. Punk's filling up the ring with hardware. I believe you heard a bell, ladies and gentlemen. Pinfall and submission can officially take place inside of the War Games matchup. It is Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Seth freaking Rollins, and CM Punk versus the WWE Champion AJ Styles, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, and the World Tag Team Champions Damian Priest and Finn Balor. CM Punk on the opposite side of the ring, obviously has his eyes on AJ. Gonna go out there, Finn Balor as well. You saw what happened on Raw Monday night. AJ Styles jumping off the top rope and crushing CM Punk through the announce table at ringside. Damian Priest unloaded on Rollins with that kendo stick. This is just something else, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the anarchy of Monday Night Raw all year long has led to. Oh no, Priest south of heaven on Seth Rollins. Rollins has got nothing left. Looking like a shell of himself inside of that ring after starting off this matchup. Probably not even at 100% after the battle with Priest on Monday. And now the beatdown that he has ensued throughout it. Sami Zayn trying to take care of Balor on the opposite side of the ring. CM Punk and AJ at each other for a moment there. Owens takes care of Dom Zayn. Gets dropped. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rollins. Curb stop. The visionary comes alive. The ring's been cut in half. Rollins steals it as the rest of the Judgment Day are on the opposing side of the battlefield. 
at any given moment. War Games and the Judgment Day and AJ Styles' hopes and dreams could go up in smoke. Rollins found a window. He climbed through it. He burned it down. Seth freaking Rollins gets the victory for his unit. My goodness gracious. Chaos to be expected. Bodies broken. Men that'll never be the same. Rollins gets that ounce of revenge that he's been hoping for. Zayn and Owens stick it to the Judgment Day. CM Punk not seeing too much action, but you see, written all over his body language, the literally did cause mass effect. At the end of the day, the bell was to be sound and four men are still left standing. Owens, Zayn, Punk, and Rollins survive War Games. Every year, the entire world waits with bated breath for one night, one event that stands above the rest in spectacle and stakes. On Saturday night, January 4th, 2025, the most anticipated and electrifying event on the WWE calendar kicks off the new year, the Royal Rumble. Emanating from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in the heart of New York City. This year's Royal Rumble promises to be an unforgettable chapter in WWE history. 30 men, 30 women, two Royal Rumble matches. The stakes a golden ticket to the main event of WrestleMania in Philadelphia this March. Who will outlast? 29 other competitors to etch their name into the history books. Who will seize the moment and secure their path to WrestleMania? Join us live on the 4th of January as Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present the 2025 Royal Rumble. We are proud to announce that coming up on Monday night, December the 23rd, the 2024 WWE Slammy Awards take place on Monday Night Raw. More news on the voting coming soon. The road to the Royal Rumble shaping up to be a hell of a one. Slammy Awards coming up next month on Raw. But what a night it has been here in the Sunshine State of Orlando. Nighttime has taken over here in Orlando, Florida. Survivor Series has been off the charts. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it is your main event. Courtesy of Thursday Night SmackDown, the World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. The number one contender, the franchise John Cena, chases his 17th trip to the top of the mountain as he challenges the defending champion in the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Respect absolutely there, but when the bell sounds, these two men will hold nothing back. Let us take a look at the keys to victory for both the champion and the challenger heading into this main event clash. Cody Rhodes defeated John Cena last October at Clash at the Castle. Will that mess with Cena's confidence, knowing in their last outing, Cody was victorious. Does John Cena's big match experience outweigh Rhodes' 2024 success? Cody's had a hell of a year, but Cena's had a hell of a career. Cena's been to the dance many a times. Does he have Cody beat before the bell even sounds? John Cena, late in his career, has been doing this for over 20 years. How many more chances does he have? Is tonight, now or never, to win his 17th World Heavyweight Championship? And when those horns sound, you know only one thing is true. Big match.
Max John is in the house. The franchise player of the WWE for over 20 years, housing 16 WWE World Championships throughout his career. Let's go to work. The words of John Cena, the only thing he knows, putting in the sweat equity, putting in the hustle, loyalty and respect, and never giving up on his road to hopeful success. But Cody Rhodes has had one hell of a 2024, and he ain't looking to slow down anytime soon. These two men may have the utmost respect, but when that bell sounds and the gold is on the line in the Survivor Series main event, they will hold nothing back. No punches to be held. It's Cena, it's Cody, it's for all the marbles in the main event of the 2024 Fall Classic. We have seen this man hit rock bottom, only to rise like a phoenix to the top of this industry. The 2024 King of the Ring winner, who defeated Guther at SummerSlam, Drew McIntyre at No Mercy, Randy Orton inside Hell in a Cell four weeks ago at Bad Blood, now walks into possibly the biggest match of his career. They have done this song and dance before, but the circumstances higher than ever. No matter if you're Team Cody or Team Cena, everybody knows that we are about to see an instant classic. It was last October a clash at the castle in Cardiff, Wales. Cody Rhodes retained his United States Championship over John Cena. That was the last time we saw Cena until last month at the season premiere of SmackDown. And ever since then, John has been earning his way to number one contendership to challenge Cody all over again. But this time it is not for the red, white, blue, and gold. It's for the big gold, the world heavyweight title. The title that Cody scratched and clawed for. The, Cody, the title that Cody stayed up at night dreaming about. And the title that Cody Rhodes is not looking to let out of his grasp anytime soon. It is a big fight feel on Sunday night, November the 17th of 2024. John Cena, Cody Rhodes for the World Heavyweight title. Let us send things down to Mike Rome for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from West Newbury, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds, the greatest of all time, John Cena. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, Weighing in at 220 pounds, the World Heavyweight Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. These two men not once but twice have teamed up e with each other in successful fashion since Cena's return last month. But this past Thursday night on SmackDown, Cena was alongside Carmelo Hayes in a victorious outing in that Champions vs. Challengers tag team bout. Clearly we saw earlier tonight that the victory for Melo three days ago did not pay him dividends as Jey Uso retained his United States title. How will Cena fare in this World Championship affair? The bell has sounded. We are underway with your Survivor Series main event. Senior referee Charles Robinson wearing the zebra stripes. John Cena and Cody Rhodes. The bell has sounded. Respect later. Cena wants the world title at any and all cost. Starting this match off hot with a springboard. And Cena going for a cover. And I think Cena knew he obviously wasn't going to keep Cody down here. But forcing Cody to 
expend a little bit of energy and maybe also get into the psyche of the American Nightmare. And now Cody with a springboard of his own. Disaster kick on Cena. And now it's Cody who's going for the cover. Almost a game of one-upsmanship in the first 30 seconds of this bout. World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes has fallen to the bottom of the WWE several a times only to rise again. Now one of the biggest names in the industry today and he faces maybe the absolute biggest name in the history of this sport in John Cena. Just because they have done this song and dance before, there's clearly a different energy surrounding this matchup tonight. Lights are on bright. Main event. John Cena knows this opportunity may not come around again. His 17th trip to the top of this industry hangs in the balance. Go for a gut wrench. Cody obviously did his homework. Goes behind on Cena. Fireman's carry position. Cena obviously did his homework. Gets out of the way that time. Now look at John Cena, rolled around, Cody Rhodes takes him down. What a corkscrew! Cena added a couple of wrinkles to his arsenal in the lead up to this contest tonight. Trying to throw something unexpected at the American Nightmare. John Cena realizes that he is gonna need to dish out not only his best maneuvers, but maybe some new ones in order to keep down Cody. There is a leg drop, and again going for the cover on the champion, but Rhodes is still into it. John Cena saw with his own eyes what Cody went through just four weeks ago at Bad Blood inside Hell in a Cell with the Apex Predator Randy Orton. If Cody can survive that violent war, who's to say Cody can't beat down John Cena here at Survivor Series? John Cena knows that he is going to have to bring his best. Bring what brought him to the dance. They don't call him Big Match John for nothing. Cena has thrived in these pressure-like situations throughout his career time and time again. Just looking to do it one more time here at Survivor Series. It's been one hell of a night. Inside of that squared circle, some great contest over championship gold, some absolutely chaotic wars inside of the two ring steel cage battles. And now back down to size, Cena and Cody Rhodes take center stage in tonight's main event. And Cody Rhodes hanging Cena up in the tree of woe. Letting the blood rush to his head. Almost sending a message to John Cena that he is the guy, he is the top dog nowadays in the WWE. John rolling to the outside, trying to get a little R&R. &R. I have a feeling Cody's gonna close that gap. Tope Suicida taking out the franchise at ringside. Cody Rhodes ain't never been afraid to leave the soles of his boots and he ain't gonna start tonight. Everything that Cody Rhodes has worked for, everything he has dreamed about is at stake in this matchup with Cena. It could be a career defining performance and possibly victory if Cody can come out on the other side of the gold. There's Cena looking for one more career defining victory for himself. Knocks Cody down with that shot, brings him into the corner. Cody meets him with a pair of boots. Cena with a reversal. These two men have studied each other's playbooks to no end, I am sure. There's got to be a little bit of a sense of urgency out of these two as well, and maybe that's not even the best way to put it, but just so much extra energy. A power outage in our production studio causing Survivor Series to be delayed one day. All these superstars housed up in a hotel room for the last 24 hours, just chomping at the bit to get inside the ring. And now finally letting that energy out. Cena off a series of leg drops. That second one coming off the middle rope, I don't think got all of it, but got enough to at least do some kind of damage to Cody Rhodes. Now bringing the champion back into the corner. John Cena's wheels are a spin in here. Cena, Bulldog on Cody. John fired up in the middle of the Sunshine State. Oh no, I think we know what comes next. A little five. Knuckle Shuffle to win the title. It's not over yet. Cody Rhodes survives. Cena's going for a lot of pinfalls thus far, but I think that one might have been his best chance yet. 
Unfortunately for Cena, Cody Rhodes continues to find a way to persevere. And there's Jonathan, another combination of strikes. Clearly Cena has been in the gym and in the ring working on his game. Cena knows he's been at this for over 20 years. He, know, he, he knows he has a playbook that many people have read time and time again. Realizes he's got to mix up the arsenal. Cody, double springboard, crossbody on Cena. And now it's Cody who's feeling fired up here in Orlando. Cena looking dazed, oof, maybe not. Closed fist, John Cena never been afraid to break things down. Oh, bro, wait a minute, crossroads. Cody going for the kill. But John Cena kicks out. A sense of urgency out of Cody. Rhodes had to shoot his best shot. But what that does now is see the confidence of Cena boost. He may not be thriving at the moment, but Cena knows he can survive the cross crossroads, excuse us. And how does that mess with Cody's psyche? An interesting playing field in your Survivor Series main event. John might have survived. He's not thriving at the moment, but never discount John Cena. At any given second, he can rise again. Cody knows that. He's just looking to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Rhodes heading to the top rope again. Extremely comfortable up there. Drops the hammer. Cena back to the outside. Cody once again going to close the gap, but Cena saw it coming. Can't roll the dice against the franchise. Cena saw that suicide dive coming from a mile away. Cena! Attitude adjustment! It's not over yet! An enthusiastic kick out by the American Nightmare! Rhodes hit the crossroads, does not find victory. Cena hits the AA, the similar result. And now these two men look to read a different page of the book and try to find an answer to this test. Cody dodges Cena's throw, only to dish out one of his own. Cena now with a couple of elbows. Business pick it up here in Orlando, Florida. John Cena with the leapfrog. Or excuse me, the monkey flip on Cody Rhodes. We've called a lot of action on this Sunday from the Cruiserweight Classic to the Survivor Series kickoff to all the way to tonight's main event. Certainly been a day that'll go down in the history books and Cena and Cody looking to be the cherry on top of it. And Wait a minute, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Cody Rhodes has been busted wide open. Well, that may have been on one of those closed fists by Cena. If Cena realizes that, he's going to be a shark that smells blood in the water. That is not going to go well as this matchup progresses. That is going to leave, or I should say, let energy leave the body that much faster. Cody's got an open wound. He's got a figure this matchup out before it's too late. Cena catching him off the crossbody. Slam! Down goes the champ. And Cena now realizing that Cody Rhodes is a marked man. Drops the leg again. Now wait a minute. Could be looking to make it for the third or fourth time in this match. John Cena all over the world heavyweight champion. Cena looking to find that route to the world championship gold and Cody Rhodes open wound may be a benefactor. Off the Michinuku driver, Rhodes has still got something left in that tank. Again, can't be shocked. We've seen Cody in some absolute battles in 2024. But up against John Cena with the world title on the line, is this the night that the American Nightmare's dream becomes a nightmare? Rhodes, side effect. Impressive reversal and a well-timed, executed maneuver. Now Cena's looking up at the lights and Cody gonna drop a knee on the franchise. Again, Cena rolling to the outside. Cody's gone one for one. Now he goes two for one off the suicide dies. If it works, why not go back to it? And Rhodes, at 
adds on to that with a suplex on the floor of the Kia Center. John Cena struggling as Cody Rhodes starts to come alive here at Survivor Series. It was last year at the Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden in, in the main event of that event that Guther kicked off his World Heavyweight Championship reign, the one that Cody Rhodes conquered just a few months ago at SummerSlam. Will we see another new World Heavyweight Champion here tonight? John Cena heads over the top rope and is able to get a reversal that time. Shoulder block right to the gut of Cody and bounces Cody's head. The exposed wound off the apron. And look at Cena showing some darker sides here tonight. Again, not to sell like a broken record, but how many opportunities is Cena going to have left in his career? Obviously, age is a factor. And now John Cena going up to the top. The franchise dropping a high elevation. Knuckles shuffle. Five figures to the face of Cody. But Rose continues to survive. Man, oh man, this matchup has been off the charts for the World Heavyweight Championship. Cena, go for a back suplex. Rhodes counters. Goes for a disaster kick. Cena counters. Cena, second attitude adjustment. That's it, it's over. No, a one count. Cody kicked out at one. Cena's in disbelief. My goodness. Reversal to reversal to AA to only a one on the pin. Cody now catches Cena with a gut. Pedigree of the franchise. Rhodes has got to capitalize into the cover. John Cena kicks out. Oh my goodness, what a matchup for the World Heavyweight title here at Survivor Series. Cody Hoisina drops him with some snake guys on the buckle. Rose has got that open wound. He's been on the receiving end of not one but two attitudes adjustments and somehow the American Nightmare continues to dream on. Cody brought to his feet. Or I should say, Cena brought to his feet, only to be dropped with a bionic elbow. And now Rhodes, heading to the top. Looking for that moon salt that lands flush. Another kick out by John. Cena, I, may, I believe, may have been busted open. I believe I saw some color. I don't know when that took place, but I know that both these men are showing battle wounds. And off another sidestep by Cena. Well, John Cena obviously a little shaken up, not able to take advantage of that misstep. Cena pulls the rug out from underneath Cody. Goes for the pin. Cody just gets the shoulder up. Cody's been busted wide open. Cena's flesh has been torn apart. Both of these men are empty in their tanks for the most prestigious prize that SmackDown has to offer. We said it earlier on, we'll say it again. John Cena not afraid to break things down into a brawl and you saw that first hand right there. Closed fist right to Cody Rhodes. Cena scales the buckles one more time. He has found some success so far coming off the high risk, high reward. And there's the elevated DDT. How much do these two superstars got left? The lights are on bright. This is why this match was awarded the main event. Two icons of this industry. Duke it out for the prize that awaits. John Cena awaiting Cody Rhodes to struggle to get to his feet. May have overcommitted. There's a reversal by Cody here. Rhodes! Crossroads by Cena! John Cena does not allow a pinfall to be made. You gotta be kidding me! First, Cody kicks out at one of the attitude adjustment. Then Cena shoves off Cody, saying, I'm not giving you the confidence boost of even a one count. 
Cody Cutter. How are we still going? Cena's a bloody mess. So is Cody. Their flesh ripped apart simply by the fist that they are throwing. John is connecting with left, with right. Cody finally dodges one. Cena set to the corner. Cody closed the gap. Bulldog Cena's head bounces off the canvas. And now Cody with a knee to the open wound. I don't know what these guys got left. Look at the blood stain that's on the canvas. Thanks to John Cena's flesh being torn apart in the means of combat. They don't call it Survivor Series for nothing. The man who is left standing will truly be a survivor after this is all said and done. Cena, one more reversal, one last ditch effort. Cena will fight till there's absolutely nothing left. Now or never for the franchise. Cody hoisted on top. Cody creates distance. Into the ropes. Gets caught with the hip toss. Cena bounces up. Shot right to the abdominal. Sends Cody off his feet. Cody with a reversal. Man, what's gonna happen next? Cena set over the top rope. Cody has not been afraid to take this fight to the outskirts. John Cena, however, opposed to it. Nice reversal that time. John Cena might have caught the American Nightmare. John Cena again, unloading with fist, with left, with right. Misses wildly off the lariat. Cody from behind, crossroads. Another, the fifth in total on this entire match just delivered. And it's finally over. What a war here at Survivor Series. Here is your winner and still the world heavyweight champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. That was a fight that we will never forget. A late match of the year candidate headlines the 2024 survivor series spectacular and that man the american nightmare cody rhodes continues to prove why he is the world heavyweight champion what a match what a night thank you for joining us here in orlando and we bid you a farewell for the 2024 edition of survivor series war games